Why would North Korea want to join the BRICS alliance of nations is the question. Yes, there are several reasons, starting with political support, which they have never desired. North Korea has never had friendly relations with the United States or any other country. This is partly due to a lack of political ties or interference in their affairs. North Korea could benefit from joining the BRICS alliance. North Korea can strengthen its ties with global trade partners by joining the BRICS. The founding members of the BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa, account for half of global GDP and 16% of total global trade. The BRICS alliance was formed to promote global development. This benefits all of its allies. For example, North Korea joining would boost their economy by allowing them to access other markets around the world. North Korea's membership in the BRICS would boost its global standing. However, the BRICS countries oppose North Korea, condemn its nuclear test, and oppose protectionism. In 2017, Chinese President Xi Jinping opened a BRICS summit that had already been overshadowed by North Korea's nuclear weapons provocation. The BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa had gathered in the southeastern Chinese city of Xiamen, hoping to debunk claims that the group of major emerging economies was fragmenting and becoming irrelevant. North Korea, however, stole the spotlight on Sunday by announcing it had detonated a powerful hydrogen bomb and claiming it could fit the device on a long-range missile, dramatically raising the stakes in its standoff with the rest of the world. The nuclear test occurred just before XI took the stage in Chairman for a pre-BRICS address, a deliberate timing that no doubt enraged Beijing, which swiftly condemned the explosion. The summit was attended by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Russian President Vladimir Putin, Brazilian President Michael Tamer, and South African President Jacob Zuma. BRICS was already struggling to overcome doubts about its own cohesion that had arisen following a protracted standoff between nuclear-armed China and India over a disputed Himalayan region. They backed down, perhaps to avoid destabilizing the summit, but the issue remained hence, and all eyes were on Modi and Tse's interaction. In his speech, Sky emphasized the importance of BRICS members showing mutual respect and avoiding conflicts, but he made no mention of the border dispute. The BRICS nations, which account for roughly half of humanity, came together a decade ago to advocate for the interests of the developing world. However, policy analysts have begun to question the group's relevance, pointing out that its members have little in common and face a variety of economic challenges. In his speech, Fazai alluded to these concerns. Some people argue that BRICS countries are losing their luster because emerging markets and developing countries have experienced growth setbacks, he said, admitting the group's members faced a variety of headwinds. The BRICS are communist-ruled China, authoritarian Russia, and the democracies of India, Brazil, and South Africa. China remains an economic powerhouse, albeit one that is slowing, while India is rising. However, falling commodity prices have had a significant impact on the economies of exporters Russia, Brazil, and South Africa. The BRICS' most notable achievement has been the establishment in 2016 of the Shanghai-based New Development Bank, envisioned as the developing world's World Bank that aims to be an alternative to the World Bank and IMF, both of which are perceived to favor the West at times and are essentially run by the United States. The North Korean hydrogen bomb claim represents an apparent major advance in Pyongyang's banned nuclear weapons program, drawing condemnation from the international community, which has prohibited North Korea from developing nuclear weapons and missiles. Kazai and Putin met bilaterally and pledged to appropriately deal with the North Korean blast, according to China's official Xinhua news agency, without providing further details. China and North Korea are nominally allies, but relations between the two neighbors, always difficult, have deteriorated as North Korea has accelerated its nuclear and ballistic missile development under Kim Jong-un. Kim has purposefully timed his nuclear and ballistic missile tests over the past year to coincide with high-profile Chinese events, such as the BRICS summit in Xiamen, the Belt and Road Forum in Beijing, 
and the Tsai Trump Mar-a-Lago summit. Nonetheless, North Korea is economically dependent on China, which currently accounts for more than 90% of its total trade volume, as well as the majority of its food and energy imports. Despite tightening sanctions on North Korea, China remains an economic lifeline and has refrained from putting regime-threatening pressure on Pyongyang.